Hello and welcome to another video of What in the Lore. In today's video we are covering three topics, a brief snippet of the history of Erosia, the five ages, as well as the twelve. Let's start things off with the twelve. The Twelve are twelve benevolent deities of Erosia who ruled the continent and its surrounding islands until the arrival of wandering tribes. Impressed by the resilience of the primitive settlers, each of the Twelve mercifully saw fit to ensure their welfare. Men are wont to suffer, and forget wherein they've sinned. Ne'er hearkening back on tragedies past, lest the Twelve might humble them. Thralls are they to sadness, as were their bygone kin, with bonds of woe athwart their breasts and that which dwells within, yet love they are withal, no thoughts to wrath portend, for men are treasured by the twelve, whose mercy knows no end. The poem that you just heard comes from an unknown source, but I figured it summed it up rather nicely. Well, let's go through the twelve. Halone the Fury. Alone the Fury is one of the twelve, goddess of war, she stands as the patron deity of Ishgard. Menfina the Lover. Menfina the Lover is the goddess of the moon and one of the twelve. The keepers of the moon, Makote clan, offer their piety to her. Thalic the Scholar. Thalic the Scholar is one of the twelve as the god of knowledge. Thalic stands as the patron deity of Charlalan. Nemia the Spinner. Nemia the Spinner is a goddess among the twelve who spins the fates of all Erosians. She is the patron goddess of weavers and is said to have a fickle personality. Just as the spinner Nemia spins the fates of all Erosians, the warp and weft of a weaver's work, too, have been known to alter the course of destinies both large and small. Perhaps this is why so many of the realm's tailors pay homage to the fickle goddess. Limleon the Navigator Limleon the Navigator is the goddess of navigation and one of the twelve gods of Erosia. Legend holds that Limza Lominza was founded shortly after the remnants of a giant armada fled its homeland following a crushing defeat. Lemulon is said to have taken pity on the plight of those brave sailors and guided them to the shallows of a rocky bay where their ships were grounded upon the sharp rocks. With no home to return to, the sailors chose to settle in this newly found land. Ashan the Wanderer Ashan the Wanderer, one of the twelve, is the patron deity of the Miners Guild. He is associated with their theory of continental drift. Birigat the Builder. Birigat the Builder is one of the twelve. He is the god of arts and architecture. Ralgur the Destroyer. Ralgur the Destroyer is one of the twelve. He is the god of destruction and servant to Nemia the Spinner. Azemia the Warden. Azemia the Warden, part of the twelve pantheon of Erosia, is the goddess of the sun. The seekers of the sun, Makote, devotion to her pervades their culture. Naldal the Traitor. Naldal the Traitor is one of the twelve. He is the patron deity of Ulda, where two great halls devoted to his two aspects can be found on the eastern and western sections of the city. Nald rules over the world of the living, and Thal keeps the realm of the dead. Nopfika the Matron. Nopfika the Matron is one of the twelve. She is the favored goddess of the citizens of Gridania and is considered the goddess of harvest and fertility. Althk the Keeper. Althk the Keeper is one of the twelve. He stands as the god of time and space. Now let me explain what this picture is that's been on screen since I started talking about the gods. This is their relations. And to kind of summarize it really quick, let's go into it. Nathal is the brother of Ashkan. Ashkan is the brother of Nathal, the Fina's lover and the teacher of Halon. Minfina is the sister of Azima, Ashkan's lover and the daughter of Althk. Azima is the sister of Minfina, Thalk's lover, the daughter of Althk and the mother of Limian and Nofika. Thalk is the teacher of Birgat, Azima's lover and the father of Limian and Nofika. Ralgar is the apprentice of Nemia and the father of Birgat and Halon. Althk is the brother of Nemia, the father of Minfina and Azima, and the grandfather of Lemia and no Nofika. Again, it's kind of crazy, but hopefully this picture helps. And I'll make sure to include a link for Imgur so you guys can take a better look at that. The next two sections of this video will be a little text heavy. The five ages will have a bit of talking in it, but the ending part is a lot of text. And then the history, the entire timeline, so to speak, of Erosia up to date is I'm gonna have a lot of that text up on screen. Just my little disclaimer. Let's kick it off. The Five Ages in Erosian Chronology. The Suns. By the unit of a soul sun, we mean that period which lasts for the duration of four cycles of the six elemental hours, those of ice, water, wind, lightning, fire, and earth. And so is the sun twenty hours and four, and so shall it ever be. The Moons. The life of a single moon span four cycles of eight suns, and is thus the sum of thirty and two. 
the eighth derived from the elements of six, ice, water, wind, lightning, fire, and earth, and the polarities of two, astral and umbral. The years. The year is made when the moon goeth around the two astral and umbral poles, fluctuating between the six elements and that in turn. In this, the year can be said to be the length of twelve moons. The first and second moons of the year are the first astral and first umbral, and together they share an affinity with ice. On their watch, all is frozen, and the breath of life sloweth to near silence beneath. The second astral and second umbral moons come third and fourth in turn, and they are the water of the melting ice, and with their flowing slaketh of the thirst of life again. Fifth and sixth are the third astral and third umbral moons, and the wind bloweth over the water, carrying its heavenly boons near and far. The fourth pairing of astral and umbral moons comes seven and eight, when the heavens rageth and the furies of lightning and sendeth them below with godly terror to test the faith of men. The ninth and tenth moons are the fifth astral and umbral, as the lightning turns to fire and its chareth growing life within the colors of its flames, bleeding blade and leaf with brilliant hues of crimson and scarlet. Years in cometh in the eleventh and twelfth moons, the sixth astral and sixth umbral in which earth consumes all, for out of the ground we are taken for the dust we are, and to the dust we shall return. Of man. The wisdom of the twelve saw fit to grant man with the cycle of years, and in turn the reverence of man bound them to his gods. The year of the navigator, of the wanderer, of the builder, of the destroyer, of the warden, of the traitors, of the matron, of the keeper, of the fury, of the lover, of the scholar, and of the spinner. The turning of these years twelve is a sacred thing, and together they comprise one epoch of man by which the histories of his endeavor are measured. Of gods. The consistency and eternity of time derive from the pulse and breath of the twelve, and by their divine will the brilliance of the astral areas which see man flourish and prosper, and the shadows of the umbral areas which see man falter and doubt, are visited upon him in equal, and neither the greatest good nor the greatest evil may escape the purview. Since the peace amongst the twelve was broken and life was created to wage their wars, six cycles of the areas have come to pass in keeping with the elemental order. The sixth umbral era belonged to the waters as heavy rains fell and the seas rose high, submerging and cleansing all in a great deluge. With time, the waters receded, ushering in the present sixth astral era, during which man has again rebuilt his halls and tilled his lands. Naught save the kin of the twelve themselves knoweth when the seventh umbral era shall come and end our days. The sole certainty what resides within man is the self same as it ever been. Ours is the power to make of our era what we might. Now you may be a little bit confused on what I just read there. I do have a lot of the definitions below for what a lot of those terms mean. So an hour is a bell, the day is 24 bells in a sun, or four cycles of six elemental hours, etc, etc. All that can be found down there. I also have inches, how many foot, how many inches are in a foot, how many you know feet are in a yard, mile, etc. I have all those measurements and stuff down there as well as ounces, pounds, and tons, and the order of the moons and astral umbral moons, how they go. That is also down in the description below. Next is the timeline. Please note that this is a basic snippet of information right here, and once more information is released, I will fill this out more. In fact, I will probably do an entire video dedicated to just this, but since it's just bear anything I figured sharing it with you guys and getting you guys on board with where we're at now is the best possible course of action the information for this timeline will be on screen as well as below in the description the first umbral era element was wind unknown time the wandering tribes began to war with each other the twelve were angered and left the land of Erosia to the tribes first astral era unknown time the age of man begins Second Umbral Era, Element Lightning, Unknown Time, the nothing is known of this calamity. Second Astral Era, Unknown Time, nothing is known of this era. Third Umbral Era, Element Fire, Unknown Time, nothing is known of this era. Speculation is the possible rise of Bahamut. Third Astral Era, about 5,000 years ago to 3428. Oligan Empire founded, expands the entire continent of Aldenard and possibly Valbrand. The Oligan Empire constructs the Royal Oligan Sunway and Starway in present-day Thanalan. The Oligan Empire imprisons Bahamut, possibly what brought about the end of the Third Umbral Era. Fourth Umbral Era. Element Earth, 
happened about 4,000 years ago to 2428. The Elegans Empire's destruction ushers in the Fourth Umbral Era, possibly due to imprisonment of Bahamut. Fourth Astral Era, less than 4,000 years ago, more than 1,500 years ago, nothing is known of this era. Fifth Umbral Era, Element Ice, less than 4,000 years ago, more than 1,500 years ago, ancestors of the Makote tribes travel across the frozen seas following food. Fifth Astral Era, 1,500 years ago, grand companies come together to prepare for the Sixth Umbral Era. Many white mages abuse their power and the art begins to die out. Sixth Umbral Era, Element Water, 1,500 years ago, a great flood submerges and damages many parts of Erosia, possibly caused by the Archons. Shadodo, a very talented thaumaturge, casts Meteor to bring down a star and uses the fragments to create the first Stardust Rod. Sixth Astral Era. Dates are current to the sixth astral calendar years. Around 233, Lufan of Shralan writes the five ages in Erosian chronology. Roughly around 572, Hur begins to migrate to Erosia in three great migratory waves. Founding fathers of Ishgard encounter Nidhogg. Haldreth takes up his slain sire's lance and thrusts it into Nidhogg's high, becoming the first dragoon. Around 972, Sultan Sworn founded Sworn to Sultan. Three swords are forged for the three paladins who founded the Sultan Sworn. Kirtana and Oathkeeper was born. Around 1022, the Lixels settle in Twelveswood, calling it the Tanoka, or the Blessed Forest, in the common tongue. They build houses in the trees and can fly. From 1022 to 1422, the Ixali are exiled from the Twelveswood by the Elementals. They travel to the canyons of Zalfatol. Their young begin to be born without the feathers on their wings that can catch the winds and allow them to fly. 1272 to about 1372, Sildis civilization is destroyed in its war with Ulda, was then said to be buried by sandstorms, possibly could still be around, aqueducts extend to Nofika's well, and the Copper Bell mines. 1422, the Ixali invent the dirigibles to make up for their lack of flight. 1468, Alamihigo invades the Twelveswood beginning the Autumn War. 1469, Ulda, Limza, Luminza, and Ishgard send reinforcements to Gridania. Alamihigo's offense is halted and eventually the Alliance wins and Alamihigo withdraws. 1472, the Goblin Pilgrimage begins. Kukuruka creates Barbados when his cult's ritual goes wrong and is forced to seal it away along with himself afterwards. 1483 to roughly 1492, Solus Sols Galvis is born, is said to be over 80 years old. 1521, the Garland Empire founded under Solus Sols Galvis. 1542, Toto Rock sealed by Elder Seedseer. 1552 to roughly 1556, Theodric proclaims himself the divine ruler of El Amigo, stating that his right to the throne was the divine rule of Nemea herself. It was at this time that he also banned the worship or likeness of any other god and executed any who defied his uncontested rule. The monks of the Fist of Ralg began to rebel against Theodric, but Theodric used the uprising of the monks as a reason to imprison them, torture them, and finally kill them. Around this time, or shortly after, Theodric led a vast army to the main temple site for the Fist of Rogal. The army surrounded the temple and massacred all those within. It was on this day that the monkhood was nearly completely lost, save for the few survivors who might have escaped. Theodric earns the title the King of Ruin and labels any followers of the Fist of Rogal as heretics, starting a crusade to hunt them down. Theodric succeeds in eliminating most followers of the Fist of Rogal and continues to rule unchallenged. The people of Alamihigo eventually got fed up with the daily public beheadings and the tyrannical rule of the king and revolted, storming the palace grounds. 1557, after inciting unrest within the masses of Alamihigo, the Garlands are able to capture the city and proceed to occupy it. Theodorak commits suicide rather than being dethroned by the Garlands. Many of the citizens of Alamihigo saw the Garlands force as liberators at first, Couple this with the fact that the city was thrown into chaos, leaderless, and desperate for a new rule, the annexation and occupation of the city was relatively easy and happened near overnight. Nidhogg destroys the town of Ferndale. The Dragoon Sir Albrecht meets Nidhogg in combat. Sir Albrecht suffers injuries that make him lose his Dragoon powers. Nidhogg begins its slumber after suffering wounds. 1562, the Garland airship Argarius invades Mordona and does battle with the dragons, the guardian of the lake. Midgar Sumer appears and destroys Argus and the Garland fleet. The battle is called Battle of the Silver Tear Skies. Primals are released with the Corellium explosion caused by the impact of Argus and Migdrum is colliding with the Silver Tear Lake. The Echo awakens in mass. 
More Dohona's landscape begins to change in the resulting explosion and ethereal disturbances. The city-state main scenarios echo begin as we enter the world of Orosia with our characters in 1.0. Beastmen are exiled from Olda out of fear of being targeted by garlands and economic competition. The Bojak Citadel is destroyed in an experiment to bring down the lesser moon Dalmond. The incident causes Sid and other engineers to leave for the city-states. The first primal in Erosia was supposedly summoned, causing the Garlands to cease their advance into Erosia. 1564, the Amalaj summon Ifrit at Mithril Pit. 1567, Zahagan become more aggressive and begin to attack, possibly the year that the Company of Heroes defeat Titan and Leviathan. 1571, the Empire resumes their advance into Erosia under the Nal Van Dernius and the Seventh Legion. 1572, the Seventh Legion begins marching into Erosia. Grand companies reform and sign new alliances. Ishgard refuses to assist. Gaius Van Balser and Nal Van Dernius conflict over the terms of conquering Erosia. Merlewit Blufsenwin, the leader of the Maelstrom of Limza Luminza, proposes the Galidian Accord, a treaty between the government and various pirate crews of Limza Luminza. Due to Garlean intrusion, the document is never officially signed, but the pirates of Limza Luminza abide by its terms and work with the Admiral. Uriniguar and the Wandering Minstrel gives hopes of a new era. Now Von Derny is defeated at Riven Road. Lesser Moon Dalamud begins falling towards Erosia. The Lambs of Dalamud, a doomsday cult, claims Dalamud will fall upon Erosia. It is said they believe the descent required a human sacrifices and considered anyone outside the cult to be heathens. They are known to have at least one priest and many warrior followers and often try to lure people from the grand cities by pretending to be concerned relatives in search of kidnapped daughters. Once isolated, they attempt to sacrifice their victims. Seventh Umbral Era, 1577, A Realm Reborn, 2.0. So there you guys have it, another video on the lore, the history, the 12, the 5 ages, all that fun stuff. A lot of this information, again guys, is going to be down below in the description. A lot of this stuff I wish I could actually put in the video, but because there's so much text, it, it looks really small. And I'm afraid you guys can't read it, so I find, you know, the pretty pictures that I got there scrolling through. Hopefully that entertains you as you listen. But again, yes, you can find all this information, the entire timeline, the Erosian chronology, the definitions, down below in the description. As always, guys, if you have any feedback, suggestions, something you would like to see, please leave a comment below, and I'll make sure to get that in the works. Please remember to like, share it with your friends, and all that other fun stuff. And until next time, may the blessing of the Twelve be with you.